Welcome back to Gear Check Games. This is part 7 of our Pokemon Red Let's Play thing. Is that what the kids call them now? What are we doing again? What have we all gathered here to do? <laughs> yeah, we're playing make, Pokemon. That's what we're doing. Make terrible YouTube videos. <laughs> the thing we're best at. Uh, as you can see, we're in Vermilion City. Oh, uh, I love this place. Yeah. Yes. I want to live in a place I like this. I, I re yes. It's like it's a coastal town. It's got lots to do. There's just a random guy with a matchup. Oh yeah. yeah. Isn't okay to to fast forward a little bit to um gold and silver. Isn't that guy still there with his matchup working on that building? <laughs> yeah. I think the only difference is that it's evolved into a machoke. Yeah. It's like finally. Man. I know it's not what's happening on screen, but I really love the revisit to Kanto in Gen 2. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Not just because it's more content, but because, I don't know, I love that you can go back and see all the little ways in which like the world has changed since you've been away. Yeah. I talked about that last episode, right? Did we? <laughs> I think, I think so. Because so. <laughs> I mentioned the stuff about, like, uh seeing a place in a game that's like from a previous game and in most games you can't go back to it it's just like a visual set piece god i pity anybody but who's like Gen watching all of these is. back to back like in an afternoon <laughs> i mean <laughs> like i do with fault. my favorite let's play no we're, we're recording them as you're watching mm -hmm. them viewer. yeah we're live streaming this actually there's no no there's, there's no uh there's no space in between the episodes <laughs> we're this funny live come yeah. see us we're at your favorite theater in your town. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to say, while I'm kicking the crap out of this guy's puppies, uh, wow, that the room we're in literally kicking a dog. Yeah. That bird's gonna eat. He's gonna carry that puppy away. Is it just me, or does Growlithe in this game look just a bit too much like a real creature? Yeah. Like he that's, doesn't that's have his I mean, he doesn't have his anime you eyes. Say when he's playing as like literal pigeon. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, I I talked to a that. lot of the Pokemon in this game are just like animals with like a little a little decoration on them. Yeah. yeah. And for some reason a those seem to be literally the... just a seal. <laughs> yeah. Well, and for yeah. some reason those seem to be the designs that people want the most. I remember seeing this. Um, this picture going around when, um, like, before Sun and Moon came out, where it was, like, what we want the final fully evolved starters to look like versus what they'll actually look like. And they had <laughs> Rowlet's final form as, like, this this, this badass-looking, like, plant-themed owl thing that looked it was basically, you know, is what you would expect. And then under the what will actually get section, it was, like, a just, just like, a bigger Rowlet in, like, a top hat with a monocle. <laughs> I'm just like that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, I want Rowlet, but bigger with a top hat and model. God, I don't want that. I want weird don't looking give me weird looking Pokemon. We already got like the gentlemanly Empoleon. We need his counterpart as Rowlet. It's true. Whatever Rowlet's final form could have been. Yeah, we need just like a like a trilogy of posh Pokemon. Yeah. Starters. Oh yeah. The the next one should be yeah, a fire give us one. That, give, give, give us that in that, that the the Pokemon game based in Britain would be the perfect opportunity to just have like Pokemon that as they evolve they don't actually change they just get fancier clothes. <laughs> oh man! Okay, now I have a theory about uh, what's what's the new Fire Bunny? What's his name? Score Bunny. Score Bunny. His final form will look like the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland, and I would love that. Or it could just be like Bugs Bunny or something. Hey, uh, what's up? You want he a Dynamax? Just turns into Orange Big Chungus. <laughs> instead, of, instead of instead of using dynamite to defeat Elmer Fudd, he uses Dynamax. Yes. <laughs> so, so I just hacked that room. You don't have to fight all three trainers when you walk in. Oh. You only have, you only have to fight youngster blank with Nidoran mail. I only remember there being stuff like that in Gen 1 where you can, like, lure a trainer from their starting position to, like, access an area or to, like, bypass something. Yeah. Although I'm what guessing, I'm guessing in this game it was an oversight. 
Because it doesn't show up in any of the later games. Well, they they at least had like the foresight to not like make it to where you could soft lock the game. That's true. By you say that, <laughs> not by doing that anyway. It's like the positioning yeah. of. I mean, this. who knows? There might, there might be one like obscure one mm -hmm. that you can soft lock it. Yeah, especially since you can save anywhere. Oh yeah. So I don't know how far into this dungeon it will be uh, before I have to walk back to uh, a Pokemon Center because I'm a little over leveled since I'm only focusing on two dudes right now, mm -hmm. uh, Miss, Mr. Flappy and Lad. Oh my God, Bishasrit's not even in the party anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think I deposited him in one of my Poke Pokemon Center skips. It's like good, goodbye, my son. Rest in you know, speaking of the uh, cheesing the trainers, I always felt like there was this weird kind of conflicting uh, deal with, like, they clearly made the trainers so that it would be, like, a puzzle to navigate through them without getting caught by them. Like a, like a puzzle or a stealth kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then if you do that, you're just gonna miss out on the exper on like the most valuable experience source in the game. Yeah. And be way behind for champion battles and stuff. Well, yeah, because don't um, trainers Pokemon give you like one and a half times more experience than wild yeah. ones do? I feel like it. I've... And like the the, the and then <laughs> that, that goes double for like gym battles. Where there's like usually an extra layer of getting through without having to fight enemy trainers. Yeah. And it's just like, I I, I feel I feel like there's there was some kind of like miss misstep here. Yeah. Well, it's like, where in, like it's like in... you can only have one or the other. Like you can <laughs> either like enjoy this extra layer of like puzzle element or whatever, and then just screw yourself over for the battle stuff. Or you can battle everyone and just totally forego the puzzle element. Well, yeah, it's like they're they're punishing you for like for playing the game. Kind of reminds me of um, of Sonic Two, where um, you know, as I mentioned in our other playthrough, you know, the top routes are usually the hardest to stay on at speed. But if you fail to stay on them, you go into a lower route that has like more like denser level design and platforming and it's just like why is why is playing the game more a punishment <laughs> you know and likewise in pokemon it's like why is having to fight a trainer considered a punishment for failing a puzzle like you get experience from it and you need yeah. experience especially in uh -huh. gen one because like there's finite numbers of fightable trainers in Gen 1 and 2, because uh -huh. you don't have the Versus Seeker, I think, until Emerald? Oh, yeah, yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can't refight anyone except the Elite Four, mm -hmm. but to uh -huh. fight them, you have had to have fought every trainer in the game and possibly ground a little bit, grinded a little bit, just a bit before fighting them, just to get by them once. Yeah. So do you ever get the Great Ball in one of these garbage cans? Yeah, I just got it. Oh, you did? Okay. I think... Once again, one... <laughs> I have completely disregarded what is before my eyes. Aww. It's okay. Uh, I think I explore every room in the ship, because I, I wanted to, like you said, soak up as much experience as I could uh, before yeah. this dungeon went away. Because this dungeon is one of the only dungeons in the game where it just straight up goes away. God, that uh, annoyed me so it. much as a kid. And it, I mean, it still kind of does. Not as much, because... Once I finish a playthrough of this game, I usually, you know, just step away from it. But, like, yeah. when I was a kid, and, like, this was all I had to play, I was like, why can't I go back to the SSN? Yeah. It was a cool place. Like, I just want, honestly just wanted to go there and, like, listen to the music. Yeah. Well, dude, all of, all of Vermilion City has good music. Honestly, Gen 1 has, like, a solid soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Um... Honestly, it, like I'll agree, it's it's solid, and obviously these are like classic tunes. But I don't find myself listening to the in-game renditions of them all that oh, often, yeah. with a few exceptions. Uh, mostly, if I'm listening to Gen One music, it's got to be the anime versions by Shinji Miyazaki. Oh, yeah. 
If I haven't sung his praises before on the channel, allow me to <laughs> allow me to start because hmm. Gen one anime music is god tier. Plus, plus the anime gives you the forever like god tier song of Team Rocket's theme. Oh yeah. Da -da 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 was anyone else disappointed um, playing yellow version when they actually put in Jesse and James as trainers and their encounter music isn't that song? I know. I wasn't because I didn't play the yellow version. I, I wonder if they just didn't have a way to like add more music since there was like limited limited space on the cart. Well, no, they wrote original music for it, but it's just not the same song. It's probably like a licensing issue. Oh, wait, was the soundtrack of the Japanese dub different than the English dub? Um, well, okay, here's what happened. So the Japanese version <laughs> had its music, and then for the, well, English, yes, but... for the English version, they replaced some of it, but kind of at random, seemingly. Because what, what the anime does now is because apparently it costs a lot to, like, license the music from the Japanese version, like, overseas. I'm not yeah. sure why. Um, so what they do now is they only keep the music that's like remixes of music from the games. But back when 4Kids did it, they I'd say they replaced about half of the music per episode with like their own original music to like save costs, but it wasn't like with any particular rhyme or reason. It was just, hey, we want different music. Yeah. Like, they knew they, they had to replace some of it, but, like, I guess they just kind of kept what they kept on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. What a wild world where it costs too much to license music from your own show Yeah. <laughs> in a different country. Well, I think it was because the distributor was different no. internationally. And also, I mean, I guess I, I guess like I can kind of understand like wanting to have more control over the production since you're like dubbing it as well. Oh boy, oh gotta God. speed up. Hi hyper red. Uh, this is to highlight. I see what you're saying about the music from this game now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds even better at max speed. Uh, th this is the part of the game where a part of my little vermilion run where I kind of showcase the town like. I just kind of go around from house to house <laughs> and ruin that man's life. <laughs> you don't mm. like fishing. He's been though. waiting ever since you started up this file to give you the ever so valuable old rod so yeah. you can finally catch Magikarp and you just you just shut him down. Yeah. You didn't even hear him yeah. out. Yeah, I feel like the game, if you do a little bit of exploring, it kind of like, like expects you to catch a Magikarp like early game. Like they really want you to use a Garrett. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, use it. Use it. <laughs> what if the Magikarp salesman just, like, showed up in disguise in random places throughout the game? <laughs> oh, he's like the photographer from Earthbound. <laughs> he just, like, comes down from the sky. At the beginning of the game, like, <laughs> the Magikarp costs, like, 10,000 gold, like, 20 million gold or something, so you're like, no, I, I can't afford it. So every time he finds you, he just keeps dropping the price. You get to, like, the, you get the, to the you get to the Indigo Plateau, and he's like, please, just take it. I won't even charge you. <laughs> it's not even cursed. I just can't, I can't bear to look at him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's starting he's to just smell. He's so sad. <laughs> God. Uh, so what I just picked up, uh, from the chairman of the Pokemon Club there, who loves his Rapidash oh so much, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is the bike voucher, which gives us access when we go back to Celadon in a couple parts. The best item in the game, and that's the bicycle. Yeah, thank goodness. It's in Cerulean though, right? Oh yeah, Cerulean. My bad. Okay. I just love I just love Celadon that much. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, it's got my favorite type as a gym. Uh, it's huge. It's got the stones. Celadon. Mm, good town. Mm -hmm. Celadon City. It's got the stones. <laughs> that's where. That's where Thanos went before he came back to Earth. <laughs> well, some some someone might argue that it has, or some people might argue that it has the stoners. But I mean, <laughs> I'll leave I'll leave that to your imagination once we start talking to Erica. Hey man, this gym's full of stoners. 
Thanos definitely picked the dumb fossil. <laughs> for, a second, <laughs> for a second, I thought you said the dumb fossil. <laughs> the dumb fossil. But I haven't seen any of those movies, but like... Yeah, you put it in the fossil machine and it gives you a magic harp. Aww. <laughs> Wait, why didn't I go for that item? I think there's some I rooms know. I just go in, look at, and go, mm, nah. Nope. Nah. I'm gonna talk to everyone at Soak Up XP. Hey, trainers. Nah. <laughs> hey, it, in my defense, I think the only grinding I have to do, and it's all off camera, <laughs> is for like one little like hour session right before uh, the Elite Four. So I feel like I, I, I get enough to get by. Yeah, I only had to dedicate an hour to mindlessly killing enemies. Yeah. It's fine. I think this guy just like runs up to you. You're, you're like trying trying to climb, you're trying to clamber over a stool to not get in his way. And he looks over at you and just like bulge, just like bull rushes you. <laughs> <laughs> throws a squid at you. Oh no you don't. <laughs> oh man. This guy's got to star you. I know I said this to all of us in our group chat outside of this, but I'm I'm playing through Fire Red on the outside, and I'm I'm really sad like because the outside. I've never used a Star You, and I wanted to use like a good like Water Psychic type in that playthrough, so I'd have like like a new experience in Pokemon to 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 like I don't know just have you know, mm -hmm. and I realized that. Leaf Green has both Water right. Psychic types in Gen 1. I'm like, why did oh, they yeah. double up? I don't understand. Because Fire Red has Charizard, and that's an equal trade. Yeah. As we all know, Pokemon Fire Red is the only Pokemon game that has Charizard in it. Yeah, it has Charizard <laughs> on the box. Not exclusively available in the game, but on the box. <laughs> yeah, X and Y, this is Charizard's game. Get your own starter. <laughs> I mean, Where's they had the Greninja. Fight? I'd take oh, Greninja over Charizard, honestly. And he is, like... One, that whole line is probably one of the most solid designs of a Pokemon in, like, a long time. Yeah. Man, Joe's such a weeb. His favorite Pokemon is Greninja. He, he, he only listens to the anime soundtrack of Pokemon. <laughs> so You found I, me out. I highlighted that... He probably eats Cup Ramen. I haven't had one in a couple days. <laughs> a couple days. So, so when I paused back there, there was something that happened with that guard. And you can go back and watch the video. But that guard was facing me. Or not the guard, the, the, the waiter. He was facing me and did the moonwalk backwards. <laughs> and I'd never seen that in a Pokemon game. Oh my god. He was trying to intimidate you. I learned this move from Simon Belmont. <laughs> He's doing the SS SS and strut. <laughs> God, that is one of my. I picked up the cast the Castlevania Anniversary Collection a couple days ago, and that is one of my all time favorite things to do in that game. Is just pointlessly moonwalk up the stairs. <laughs> what? You reminded me of one of my favorite things to do in uh, what is it? Smash Five? Is that what we have now? Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Ultimate, yeah. Ultimate. Yeah. Uh, when playing Richter or Simon Belmont. Uh, anytime I get a KO on somebody, I crouch, but they're one of the few uh, characters that can crouch walk. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most comical thing to see, because he's just doing this, like, army crawl on his, like, and he's hunched over, and he's, like, real scrunched up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that in, in Super Castlevania 4. <laughs> so watching this, like, buff barbarian, like, demon slayer do this little crouch walk is just... It's silly to me, and yeah. I love it. Uh, I think we're really close to the end of the SS. Yeah, I think there's only like yeah, a couple of rooms left. Because really, the only yeah. thing you gotta do in here is fight the captain, and I guess fight uh, Blue to get to him. Yeah, you you can beeline to him. Like all of the trainers in here are optional, <laughs> uh, along with the items. But I did pick up one good TM. I made sure to get it. Uh, I, and that was the TM for Body Slam on, uh, I put it on Ivysaur, because it, what is it, like a 65 power move? I think it's and 80, it, honestly. And yeah. it has a chance to paralyze. Yeah. And I don't think I kept, I don't think I kept, uh, Stun, Stun Spore on Ivysaur. 
So it was nice to have that extra status effect possibility on him. So that gr those girls in that room back there kind of reminded me of... Um, do you remember those two NPCs in Castletown in Twilight Princess? They're like standing at opposite ends of an alley and like, Hey, is it just me or is that guy looking at me? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Except they're standing like three feet away from each other. Oh yeah, Blue gets different sprites for some of his encounters, doesn't he? Yeah. God, Pidgeotto's a beefy boy in this game. Bird fight. <laughs> Wait, when did he get burned? I don't remember this. When you were fighting the pony duck. Like, oh, burned. that's right. I was watching the fight and I, for a second I thought the message said Ponyto was hurt by its burn. And then I was just like, oh, is it not supposed to be like that? <laughs> it's not a, yeah, it's not a ponytail, it's just a horse it's that's on fire. It's just a horse. I love that. Like, that's one thing I like about Gen 1. Like, you guys were saying outside of this, like, some Pokemon are just, like, animals. Like, yeah, for sure we said it in the episode. <laughs> yeah. Some are just, they're just normal Anis animals. <laughs> that's true, it's but I also... It's on fire. I also like that certain Pokemon are just, like... Like, really, you can only class them as, like, monster. Yeah. Like, uh, like Hitmonlee. Did I talk about Hitmonlee in a previous part? I don't know if you did. Like, he just looks like a chicken drumstick. <laughs> with a face yeah. and, like, slinky legs. Or he kind of reminds what? me of that one, um, Warner Brothers character. Is it Gossamer? Oh, Sweetums? Sw oh, or or Sweetums yeah. from the Muppets. Yeah. Looney Tunes Muppets, you know, it's all it's all the same. Okay, I guess he's not a monster, he's he's Sweetums. Uh that I mean like we I sh I I shit on this game for like, you know, oh yeah, the Pokemon it's got Pokemon it's just a seal or just a horse that's on fire, or it's just a bird with like a feather on its head. But it's like I feel like this game was going for more natural designs mm -hmm. and like a na more natural feeling world. Where it's like, yeah, these are just like animals that live in the world. Yeah. Whereas as the games have gone on, they get more like fantastical. Yeah. Which I mean, that's also fine. It's just that like, you know, th this game has its own kind of like style going for it. Yeah. yeah I feel like the Pokemon designs kind of match it better. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say that like the the artistic through line of um, gen the Generation One Pokemon is um, like genetic mutation. Yeah. That they're all kind of like a familiar concept that's kind of twisted. I, that is all of Gen 1, like, wasn't that like, didn't, wasn't, didn't the creators come out and say that? Uh, possibly. I feel like I remember that somehow. I think I've read that on like Bulbapedia, but maybe that, that oh. is word of God. <laughs> this is the true rival fight, starter versus starter, mm -hmm. who will win. <laughs> I always, I, I always like doing this against rivals God. just to see how well they stack up even if they are like outmatched like on a technical level yeah God, that that level uh, level gap is really doing you a favor <laughs> well it was oh yeah so that first ember who barely did anything <laughs> who will win a dragon or a plant that's on oh, fire oh god oh no L lucky may die here <laughs> it's going uh -huh. away I'm, I'm glad I picked up that max potion because I have not been buying any recovery items. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, usually when I play the- oh my god, he's got a focus sash. He's the top percentage of all Abras. Uh-huh. He's lucky. He is. Yeah, usually when I play these games, I, um, I go through them pretty slow and explore pretty diligently and, like, get all the hidden items and stuff, so... I don't usually need to buy healing items in the early game. Yeah. Because, like, like, they're there if you want them. Yeah. The, the most amount of healing items you'll probably buy is, like, right before, like, big boss battles, like, gyms, or, like, yeah. uh, like Giovanni fights. Yeah, Not usually, that either Giovanni fight is hard. <laughs> usually I don't spend a whole lot of money on items until I get right before the Pokemon League. Yeah. And... Even then, I usually end up buying more than I end up needing, like, by a long shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I usually, yeah. on my first run of the the league in most games, I buy, like, 20 of everything. Like, 20 yeah. revives, 20 full restores, 20, like, mega potions or whatever they're called. Dan? 
Uh, I didn't buy anything in the game. Oh. Because I was a, I was a, I was a little screwed. You waited for the. And then I got to the end of the game, and I'm like, man, I've got like a million dollars because I never spent any of it. And I, it's the end of the game, so I, there's nothing left to spend it on. So I just bought like 90 max revi or max revives or whatever, and like full restores and stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I guess I can just tank through the Elite Four now. <laughs> good, old Scro be good old Scrooge McDan. Yeah. Dan, when that you get old, do you need to just go around in like a top hat and a scarf, like hunched over? I can't be a Scrooge though because I love Christmas. That's true. Okay. Yeah, we can be a Scrooge about something else. Find a holiday you don't. Hanukkah. Want. Wait, no, then I'd be an anti-Semite. Yeah, yeah, maybe don't do that. <laughs> uh, Valentine's. What's a holiday Day. that like I'm, nobody? I'm likes. old and alone, and <laughs> I hate Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah. Yeah. Because it reminds me of my loneliness. Yeah, man, Valentine's oh. Day is the worst. <laughs> that's that's gonna be the art for this episode. We're gonna find a picture of uh, far fetched, and we're gonna uh, superimpose no. Scrooge McDuck's clothes onto him. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I thought you were gonna say it's far fetched, but he's all alone on Valentine's Day because <laughs> nobody likes him because he's a crap Pokemon. Because everybody else is using Dodrio and Firo. <laughs> Aw, Firo is pretty good though. He yeah. looks red. I think I used Firo for a little bit in my playthrough. Oh, that's the last of the SSN. Fare thee well. Goodbye. Watch I out for like... icebergs. Yeah, right. Now you'll never get Mew. Oh yeah. Is that truck even there? I've never actually hacked that hacked myself into this area it, again to go see Well, it. I mean I I assume it is. I think it is. Like I feel like I've seen footage of it at least. But I've never done the glitch myself. It's God, like, so many of these player sprites look very similar to you, but not quite. Yeah. yeah. It's confuse you. A lot of bug trainers do, or like the youngsters. It's like, which yeah. one's me? Like, if you save the game oh, right no. next to one and come back. <laughs> I was a bug trainer all along. Well, yeah, the youngsters are basically <laughs> I've been just. using the wrong Pokemon. The youngsters are basically just you with your hat turned backwards and minus the vest. Yeah. That suck. That's why I use Rattatazzle. Well, join us Good next time, and we may go after Lieutenant Surge. Probably not. Maybe. Bye, y'all. Bye.